Now I know this is going to be a great video because <laughs> JR, that's her expertise, she's filming it. So Mario Leone is here, borough manager. Dominic Crivelli and I earlier today were talking about you and I'm a big fan of Dominic, we go way back. But what Avelli Concrete is about to hopefully partake into the future is spectacular stuff. And we'll save it for down the road when I have a chance to catch up with Dominic. But anytime I get a chance to give him a little love, I'm gonna do it. So he's talking about really coming into the next century, as you know. Absolutely. And you know what's inspiring about Dominic is, you know, he's at the tail end of his his career, but uh, you know Have anybody told him that yet? Yeah, yeah, he's right. I think uh, some people have uh, quoted him as being a, a, a freak of nature and I don't think he'll mind me uh, Very saying good that. Analogy. But uh yeah, you know, but he, he's he's passionate about his, his company and he wants to leave a legacy for his children to, um, you know, to keep it going. And in order to do that, um, they have to modernize. Well, here's the thing. He's done everything by hand his whole life. And they continue to do it by hand, but he understands modernization, technology, it's the world, it's the future, and he's willing to invest in this region. And that's why I love Dominic Crivelli, Adavelli Corporation. 40 years of doing extraordinary things. Speaking of extraordinary things, well, you have done here. Yeah. We miss you in Manaka. Uh, Believe me. Yeah, I miss Manaka too. But you're doing incredibly well. Not to mention some great ice cream up there in Hopewell Brewster's. Got to give Norman you some love there. But this park has always meant a lot to me. We actually broadcasted in this park many, many years ago on radio. Talk about what some plans in the works right now have to do with this park. And speaking of the future, not just a valley, but this park, Emergent Street, Streetscape, and more moving in. Yeah, so obviously you can see some of the construction behind us. It's our uh, streetscape on Merchant from 8th to 11th, uh, about a $4 million project. And we're hoping to secure another uh, additional $1 million to uh, move the streetscape from 11th to 12th and complete the whole corridor of Merchant Street, which is about a mile long, uh, which is uh, pretty significant for a small town. Um, but obviously, you know, this park over the years, it's, it's tired. It's got, you know, some worn concrete. So uh, we secured some DCNR grant funding to, uh, to improve the park and kind of bring the streetscape into it. And honestly, I, well, well, I knew we were meeting here. So uh, we actually had a meeting on Tuesday night with council. And here's a rendering of the conceptual of the new park uh, layout. Um, it's about almost a $700,000,000 $700 uh, 700, dollar project and uh, what it does is make the uh, gazebo ADA uh, compliant and then uh, actually makes the uh, area around the gazebo a little larger to handle uh, you know bigger bigger events which we hope to uh, have more concerts in the park and activities in here uh, for the community. So since you've come here I know your work ethic and who you are and I'm not shocked by any of it but just some of the things that you're really proud of and I know you're not done just some of the things you've been able to accomplish so far. Yeah, so um, obviously I, it was a project that I had kind of inherited um, uh, before I came here. It was the Henning Park splash pad. Uh, Wonderful thing. Um, so, um, but with COVID, and as you talked earlier, uh, the impacts of it, they got the grant money, but with COVID, many uh, construction projects doubled in cost just with supply chain and labor and, and all that. So we kind of were in a holding pattern because we had to secure, secure more funding. And uh, graciously, DCNR knew that hardship and uh, provided us some additional COVID relief dollars and, and whatnot. So that park's amazing uh, to drive past it, to see the children out there playing in the splash pad and on the playground equipment. It, it, it's, it's really tremendous. So we saw that and really wanted to enhance the gateway coming into Ambridge from that part of town. Uh, we secured some uh, additional COVID money and we put an outdoor fitness court. And it's the second outdoor fitness court of uh, that style in Beaver County. The first one's in uh, uh, Chippewa Township. And I understand, I think my good old town of Manaka is gonna be installing one too. So uh, it's always great to see them, them doing good things. Um, the Dr. Street Troya, by the way, and this gentleman right here, when this whole journey began so many years ago, even though it's been very trying at times to try to juggle everything, but because of you and Doc, you got me started doing these things back in 2009, 2010. It's really been a, such a window of opportunity. There's a lot of good things going on in this region. Oh, absolutely. Well, the region as a whole, too, but you know, yeah, uh, it's it's been uh, extremely busy here, and 
Ambridge with all the new businesses. I think we're up to five coffee shops now. So when I first got here, we had uh, uh, Merchant Coffee and Old Crow. Now we got the Three Sister Bakery. We've got Cafe Nero, uh, Grizzlies, um, and everything else. So people are saying, you know, how can Ambridge sustain five coffee shops? But we're doing it, and uh, and I experience all of them, and every time I'm in them, they're all. They're all proud. Listen, I love your mayor. You've got a great council. Council president has had a chance to speak with them. Old economy recently, that big centennial celebration, the bicentennial. But here's what I need you to do for me. I don't know if you've been listening to me on the radio a lot, but I am all in on trying to get this Nippon Steel deal done with you and Steel. And I just want to let everybody hear a story about Ambridge and have him jump in and obviously a guy who has been involved uh, politically watching things grow through government and the private sector. I think he'd be the perfect person to talk about it. So yesterday, big headline, they're talking about 2.7 billion are going to invest in the steel industry here in this country. They've gone on record along with the 14.9 billion dollar price tag that they are now going to offer another billion for the Mon Valley Works. Ambridge, of course, American Bridge across the river, J&L Steel, uh, Mr. Better's that development along the Ohio River. You got 72 Steel putting in a 200 million dollar steel plant. Uh, Mr. Uh, Macklin, of course, for many years now is locally owned BMAC, PGT Trucking. You got the barge traffic. You got Norfolk Southern CSX. Please explain to this audience because you're a lot smarter at this stuff than me. What, it's a fact. Why this type of stuff still matters in a world of technology, and no matter where you are politically, Democrat or Republican, it's about jobs, and they are doing it a whole lot cleaner now. And the pawn steel is going to do just that. They're putting their money where their mouth is. I see this as we head towards Labor Day weekend. The great United Steel Workers, the Teamsters, the East Atlantic States Regional Council of Carpenters. Not everybody's in on it, and I understand. But I want somebody other than me to talk about why this deal matters and why steel still matters in this region. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, you, you said it, it's jobs, right? Um, I'm certainly not an expert as to, to give any uh, great advice, but yeah, I mean, jobs and, you know, when people are working, you know, businesses are flourishing, it's the whole economic engine and driver for the region. If you talk to anybody, you know, one of the things we worry about in this country is our military and being safe. Um, American Bridge is one of the reasons why we won the war. Uh, and they were doing a lot of incredible things back then, as was j &L Steel and U.S. Steel. So all I'm saying is if they came to you and said, we want to put this plant somewhere in Ambridge, and it could employ maybe a thousand people, you'd find some property. Well, we have 45 acres on, on the river <laughs> that's uh, actually right on the market. It's ready, and actually it's where um, you know American Bridge Bethlehem operated Hill. from, and, and you know, they've got the docking facility where they transported all their bridge pieces that were transported throughout the uh, the country and world. So, uh, I mean, we're, we're ready. We're ready to take them. And a valley could do the concrete. And a valley could do the concrete. And I, you yeah. guys could just pay me by giving me either uh, Frank's or a police station pizza. We, we got it. In closing, what has that young lady that I just interviewed meant to you that higher? To me, she's just electricity. I mean, she's lightning in a bottle, JR. Yeah, sense. yeah. As you know, the society, I mean, they're more demanding. They want information. Uh, right away and you know Facebook website all that is an engine that the municipality need you know, we're like a business and we need to provide that to our customers our residents and you know I, I offer I'm a small office there's myself and two uh, administrative assistants and we're tasked day to day with our responsibilities and keeping up with that social media was you know, we just didn't have time and it was one of those things that was a lot of work it was the last thing and you've got residents and Manning. you know we, we we want more information so um she's been a blessing uh her skill inset and uh you know myself and uh the assistants we would do it but we're not graphic artists it was boring and bland and uh we just want to promote ambridge in a more professional way uh cutting edge and we want to attract people that are looking for a progressive borough and with her assistance as our social media director i think you're going to see some really cool ads. Uh, we're going to be releasing the new website sometime in October, early October, hopefully. And with that, we're also going to have a borough app. So we're modernizing the borough from a social media and computer.
100%. This may be hard to believe, you know, it's been a year since Joe Dentici passed from Coons Market, and I know you and him kind of hit it off right away. He was a people person, and we've got Coons Market in Hope Hall right across the uh, Ambridge Aliquippa Bridge. Groceries and business like that in these coffee shops. Joe used to always say, everybody's got to eat. That's all so important. If people are going to work and they want to be young, like J.R. Mason, if you have home, own, have home ownership, raise a family, you got to have all the moving parts. And grocery industry, the banking industry, all of that stuff is important, isn't it? Yeah, so um, with that, obviously it was, it was hard for the community. Um, we had a buy low right here on 11th Street that opened, and unfortunately, all these came in, bought them out. There's an all these right up the road on 65, and they, you know, they were too close in proximity, so the casualty of the one here in Ambridge got shut down. However, you know, we don't have a grocery store in Ambridge. We do have one there in Harmony on Dust good Avenue. Good people. Uh, good people. So, I mean, it's close. Um, if, we were, if we were larger than two square miles, um, we would have a grocery in it, but we're only two square miles. But there is an aggressive push to try to get a, a grocery back in uh, Ambridgeboro. We're actually doing a feasibility study um, to show that viability. Um, and right now we're targeting a more cliche kind of a thing, a Trader Joe's. Um, Coons Market. Oh, yeah. But I mean, we will, if Coons, uh, you know, the study provides. Well, we got a CEO, Jody Zima, yeah. she's pretty sharp, yeah. man. She knows um, the numbers. We here's, will here's the thing. Here's the thing, and I get so honked off about this stuff. Every community should have a bank and a grocery store. And when you start taking away those two staples, that's not the America that I grew up in. And there's no reason with all the great technology and with all the stuff that you've done here, now you're going to be doing social media wise with JR. This is a wonderful place, Ambridge, and I want them to have all the bells and whistles. And you know, that's one of the reasons why Bellevue, we're doing a multi-million dollar rebuild, a brand new store with Coons Market. Gonna have a little shopping plaza there. So anything's possible, but now more than ever, we gotta make people wanna stay in communities like Ambridge. Absolutely, and that's, that's the goal, is to have people live, work, and play and in the community they live in and have all those amenities to do it. So now, I mean, you can even exercise in <laughs> you don't have to leave. So listen, this has been a really good town. I, I I enjoyed it. Um, you know, I, I love Manaka, uh, the people there, uh, great community. Um, but like Manaka, you've got a great police department here too. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Uh, you know, the whole I mean, on that whole employee uh, from public works to fire department, everything. Yeah, we we have a, a, a great municipal force here. Um, but. Yeah, it was it was kind of weird, and we've all talked about the challenges of COVID. Um, when I was in Manaka, I was uh, I was in a I was stuck. I was in that hole. It was frustrating. So you, I, I'd like I have to be doing something. And I, I saw the uh, the opportunity to come here in Ambridge, and um, I knew it would be a challenge. Uh, a lot a of one mile here. mile long Main Street, and uh, you know there was a force that brought me here, and I'm I'm having a blast. Um, they like said I can't wait for you know, the streetscape project. It's got $1.9 million last week. We're going to upgrade the corridor coming in off of 65 to uh, uh, Merchant Street. And uh, and then a big project that I, I put a plug in. Um, we're aggressively uh, pursuing a senior sports complex. And I know you did a tremendous amount of coverage on the M7 complex. Right. So it'll be complementary to that. Um, uh, not looking at for it to be a competitive thing. Uh, we think there's, we believe there's space for that one and here. Um, because there's a lot of other sports, uh, I've got approached by cricket. So it, it's wild. It's pickle the, the pickleball, the indoor sports thing. So, and then um, as a region to truly attract the, uh, the mega uh, sports tournaments, we need more than four basketball yeah, courts. But you still have that soapbox dirt. Yeah, I, don't, I was with Tim Cassidy a while back. I don't think people realize. No, it's big. That's like worldwide. Yeah, right there on 14th Street. Yeah. I mean, so you, there's some really hidden gems here. Turtle racing. That's more my speed. <laughs> but I will say this. What I've noticed with people like JR filming this video when I was with the mayor and the council president, there are a lot of young people buying houses. And I'll say it again. If you want home ownership and you want it to be affordable, Damn. Yeah, we, 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 we are still affordable, and this is a good thing, um, but it's also a great place to make an investment because the prices are, you know, escalating as well. So if you buy a house here and stay here for three, four years, five years, 
when you go to sell it, you're probably going to make money on it. Listen, so as you're enjoying all of those great grocery items this Labor Day weekend from Coons Market, maybe sitting here in the park, just know there's a lot to look forward to as far as the future. And I want to thank you, as always, for letting me come here. Meeting JR, she is a gem, and you got to get those books, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, especially Stolen Pieces, all three versions. But one thing is for sure, um, Ambridge is a whole lot better, and it was pretty good. Now that you're here, I want you to keep up the good work. One last thing, I don't know if you know this, but we're getting a call. Why? Yeah, Beaver County Tourism and uh, most uh, agencies actually uh, gifted us with a $50,000 grant, and we are going to buy a trolley that's going to operate on starting it and introducing it. It'll operate on the weekends. Again, I told you, Merchant Street's a mile long. So if you stop down at Ultra Genius, you want to grab a beer. Then you want to walk up to Hermada, uh, and then you got to walk back. You need that trolley. You may need that trolley, and it it also yeah, and it also help we believe with our parking because we only have so much parking on Main Street. We'll loop the trolley around, and it'll pick you up at some of our parking lot destinations as well. I found my career once I retired. All aboard! That's it. That's it. Listen, keep up the great work. Thank you. You're a gem, and uh, I just absolutely love this community. I love this place called home. All right, till we meet again, it's your Pat Pack from Ambridge to Park along Merchant Street, where there's a whole lot of good happening. Good night. Have a very happy and safe weekend from your Pat Pack.